Well, there's a debate. Yeah. And the debate is whether full-time RVers go on vacation or not. Oh, yeah. I say full-time RVers do go on vacation. Yeah. Our life isn't a vacation. Yeah. No. But we do go on vacation. And we're getting ready to kick off the Wayward Wags summer vacation. Yes, we are. So to us, it's a little different because we do a little bit more than we would do. Spend a little spend bit more, more money than we would spend. Yeah. Go to more places than we would go like yeah. in a more frequent order. Yeah. And so, uh, so yeah, for this summer, for the next several weeks, we're on vacation. Yeah. We are kicking off the summer vacation at Iowa's Best Burger Cafe. And we're gonna see if they actually have Iowa's Best Burger. Think they do? I don't have high hopes. <laughs> I, nothing against them, it's just I'm setting the bar low. Okay. Just, is it because it's Iowa or because it's a gas station? Because it's a gas station. <laughs> Well, we just finished up at Iowa's Best Burger, and I would ask you if it's the best burger that you've ever had in Iowa, but I already know the answer. I know. It is. It's the only burger I had while we were in <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> and this is our only day in Iowa. We just figured we'd kick it off today, but the, uh, the summer vacation is going to take us through Kansas City, uh -huh. Branson. Yep. We're going back to Uranus. Yes, we so are. So buckle up for that. <laughs> no, we're I taking mean, friends to Uranus. Yeah, it's always funner <laughs> with friends in Uranus, That's right. isn't it? It's a party. <laughs> kind of party in Uranus. I can't wait till we get there. <laughs> then we're heading over to St. Louis, yep. Nashville, and then Louisville is where we're going to wrap things up with a uh, Wagster meetup at the Bourbon Trail. Yep. And we're trying to jam this all in because in less than five weeks. We're gonna be grandparents. I know. So we gotta we gotta get all the fun <laughs> done because we're gonna be hanging out a couple of months with Lauren. Yeah. Well, we made it to our first stop, Kansas City, and uh, we ran into a little snag. Well, I should say the people who were here before us ran into a little snag. We're parked up at the front of the office. I was just hanging out with our friends that we're gonna be camping with, and we can't park in our spot yet because the person who is parked in the spot that we're supposed to be in right here just had an issue with the leaf spring on their truck broke. And so we're just sitting, luckily we have friends here who we're gonna be camping with. So while our truck and our trailer is sitting up front by the office, we've just been chilling in their RV. And now as soon as we get them out of here and we get pulled in and all set up, I'll show you who we're gonna be camping with and caravan with for the next few weeks. Well, a couple that we are camping with and we'll be traveling with for the next couple weeks is Jerry and Teresa yeah. from the Happy Place Diaries. And we've been planning this for a long, long time. And like planning it a year out. But the original plan was not to be here. It's to be west. It's to be out west. We were gonna go to like Moab and Canyonlands and Arches and yeah. Bryce Canyon, all yeah, that all stuff that. we were supposed to go to. Then we found out Lauren was pregnant. Mm -hmm. And that was after we had already made a bunch of reservations. Yeah. And then we had to go back and cancel it, which meant they had to go back and cancel too. They could have stayed on that trip, but they decided to come out here and do a different trip with us. So yeah. we each lost some money. So there were some reservations that charged still one-nighters. Yeah, so. so we felt bad for that because they took that hit also. Yeah. So we got them some gifts. Yeah. So now we're gonna run over there and we're gonna give them their gifts and then we gotta hurry because it's Good almost dinner, dinner time. <laughs> and the campground put us behind because they didn't move that guy out that had the broken down truck. So yeah. finally got in here settled, showered, and now let's go give out some gifts. Ready so, to drink. Yes. That's right. <laughs> what? You don't have to mix it? If you read it, it's all military lingo on there. But this is so you can smoke oh. your old Did, you just You just got one. I got one for Father's Day, oh, yeah. Oh my gosh. That is cool. Okay, so, I, I'm going to have to learn how to use that. filler and to make the big ice balls. Nice. Well, and thank you. I appreciate it. You got two balls. balls. Two, got balls. two balls. And the left one's <laughs> always over here somewhere. <laughs> Leslie is introducing Scout to the puppies. So let's see what, see how they react. This is Sadie and Chunk. This is Jerry and Teresa's babies. Well, we're back. We are back. At the World War One Museum. We've been yeah. here before, so we're not mm -hmm. doing like a full on dedicated video to it. But no. um, I will leave a link in the description to the one we did before. Mm -hmm. Be warned. It was the first year we were doing this. 
so the video is probably not very good. <laughs> but we're with right. Jerry and Teresa. They're doing a video on it. Yeah. So we'll leave a link to their video so you can go watch their video too. But um, if there's anything new, interesting, new exhibit, different, yeah, we'll check we that. probably will talk about that a little bit, but yeah. it's not going to be a full on thing. But this is by far our favorite military museum, museum that yes, we've been is. to since we've been on the road. Mm -hmm. We've been to one and two and one is my favorite. Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with number two, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the World War II Museum in, in New Orleans is really great too. Yeah. The Infantry Museum in Columbus, in Georgia, Georgia is really I love great. That place too. But this one is just... Uh, very impressive. Very impressive. I don't remember seeing this the last time we were here, but this is the American flag that was flown over the Capitol on the day that President Woodrow Wilson addressed Congress to declare war on Germany. That would mark the uh, mark the initial involvement of the United States in World War One. There's some audio playing back here, but I wanted to show you they have like simulated area of what an artillery round would look like after it had struck the earth. So I'll take you in here and show you real fast. None of the wounds are serious. They operated on me the evacuation. That's how deep of a hole or a crater that an artillery round would create in World War One. And I'm way I'm way down here. It gives you some perspective. It's crazy. And at concerts are often right up in the front row. Yeah. Equal rights. Debris and stuff everywhere. I always gravitate toward the medical stuff because it just intrigues me the most because I was a medic in the army. So just crazy how how far we've come in the history of medical advancements and especially in the military. One of the things we have not advanced very far in is the litters. Um, we still use the litters in the Army. Well, when I retired, we still used the litters. And this table right here, which looks like just a regular folding table, is actually an operating table in World War One. So in, when I was in Iraq, our operating table was basically a litter up on litter stands, which look like saw horses. And you have the, uh, the canvas bottoms on the litters so the blood could run through and it wouldn't get pulled up under the under the casualty and uh, we had to change uniforms quite often just because the blood would would drip through the canvas litters onto our uniform and onto our boots and stain them but uh, that has not advanced much at all I gotta tell you we've been to a lot of cities and seen a lot of skylines but Kansas City is pretty impressive they have a pretty pretty impressive skyline one of my favorites I think well, we just came out of the uh, World War One Museum, mm -hmm. which was very cool. Yeah. And I wanted to share a conversation that we had in there. Oh God, which one? So here's the deal. <laughs> it's just it's just stuff to ponder and think about. It's deep thought. Okay. Oh, I know what you got. So Hitler was a soldier in World War One, fought for Germany. He was a corporal in in the infantry, and he was wounded, but he wasn't killed. So we started thinking, what would happen if Hitler would have been killed? in World War One, and how would it personally affect us? So it's actually pretty deep because if Hitler had been killed in World War One, he wouldn't have gone on to do all the things he did in World War Two. And your grandmother was dating your uncle who was killed in World War Two at Normandy. So she would have probably married your uncle. Absolutely. Not your grandfather. Not grandfather. So you wouldn't exist. We would not have met, we wouldn't be married, and you wouldn't be watching this video right now. Ha! How deep is that? Well, it's deep, all right. That's I'll deep. tell you how, how, what it's deep in, but it's deep. <laughs> it's all true, it's true. Well, I mean, yeah, I kind of, if you look at it that way. Yeah. But I see it as, if it wasn't Hitler, it would have been somebody else. Yeah, maybe, but the events... Somebody would have started that. The events wouldn't have transpired exactly maybe like they a, did. Though. Exactly, yeah. But I'm I'm going to be the ha glass half, you know, full person. I'm gonna, what? Yeah, I know. You're uh, going to be the I glass half full person? Somebody would have stepped in. Somebody <laughs> would have ran that, and my parents, my grandparents still would have met the way they met, and then my parents... And so in house. Leslie's world, we're still married. You're still watching this video. Basically, there's no way around it. He was going to <laughs> end up with me. <laughs> I was destined to end up with you no matter what. Yes. Okay. No matter how you slice it. So now we're headed down to Union Station. Jerry's going to try to skip. Here he goes. There you go. Frolic, baby. Frolic. This is the military school. Yeah. <laughs> there goes Teresa too. Hey. <laughs> well, this is what the inside of the Union Station looks like in Kansas City. 
I guess it's what you would expect the inside of a Union Station to look like in Kansas City. Huge, huge ceilings. This is pretty amazing. The archways are ginormous, huge clock. It leads you into where I guess where the train stations used to be and where you would go to catch your transportation. But now it's just a big open, uh, the kids are out here playing and uh, just a big open area in the middle of Union Station. It's crazy. This is probably, it's gotta be 150 yards. Bigger than a football field in here. But just as a frame of reference, look how little Leslie looks out there in the middle of this huge train station. I can only imagine what this place looked like in its heyday when this place was just lined with benches and seating and people with their luggage waiting to get on their train and just the noise of it all. But now it's pretty quiet in here. Still an active train station. Still have Amtrak here. It's not as big as it used to be back in the day when all the trains ran through here, but you can still catch a train here and you can still take it to other destinations. This would have been the ticketing area, which is still in place and intact. And then they still have an actual functioning post office in here. And then you got all the windows here, the ticketing windows. And you got this old letter carrier mail cart, which is cool too. And like she does everywhere, Leslie found the chocolate. And she, I can't even control her, she's gone. She saw chocolate and she's just, she's gone. Chocolate is the answer. I don't even care what the question is. As predicted, we did not get out of the chocolate factory without getting some chocolate. I got some ice cream, Leslie's favorite. S'mores. S'mores. <laughs> It does have all the flavors of s'mores too. It's like, but it's ground up really finely. So you don't have like the big chunks of marshmallow or chocolate or graham cracker. It's all like ground up and like churned into a chocolate ice cream. The campfire marshmallow flavor. Yeah, a little smoky marshmallow flavor. It's really good. So we're going to eat and walk because there's a lot of shopping through here. So we're going to check out all the shopping while we eat our s'mores ice cream. Hey, stick around for a few seconds. We're going to honor a fallen hero. If you want to get involved with helping us help veterans, everything you need to know is right down in the description of the video. Appreciate you watching. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.